hello students so today we shall study the structure reproduction and life history of paxenia as the life cycle of paxenia is very long we have split the videos into two part the first video is paxenia 1 and the second one is paxenia 2 so don't forget to watch the second part of the paxenia in the second video so this is reka working as associate professor in government science college bangalore so paxenia belongs to the division mycota subdivision eumycotina class basidiomycetes subclass heterobasidiomycetidae order uridinalis family paxeniaceae example is paxenia basidiomycetes it is the third class of fungi which is divided into two subclasses one is homo basidiomycetidae and the other one is heterobasidiomycetidae so this paxenia belongs to the subclass heterobasidiomycetidae order uridinalis family paxeniaceae example is paxenia so paxenia includes about 700 species which causes rust diseases in wheat barley and oats so the name Paxinia has been given to the genus after T. Paxini, an Italian scientist. So it is called as rust because of the reddish brown color of the spores which are commonly seen. See on this photo you can see the brown color, reddish brown spots on the stem and the leaves of the plant. So this wheat is attacked by three rusts namely black or stem rust, yellow or stripe rust and the brown rust. So here the most important of all the rusts is the black stem rust of wheat caused by Paxenia graminis. So it is the most destructive and widely studied of all the rusts causing serious damage to the wheat crop. So, Paxenia graminis, it is an obligate heterocious macrocyclic polymorphic fungus. Obligate parasite, it is an obligate parasite. It has to complete its life cycle only in the living host. It is heterocious because it requires two different hosts to complete the life cycle. One is the wheat plant and the other one is the barberry plant. So, the primary host is the wheat plant wherein the diplophase stage of the fungus is passed on. Whereas on the barberry plant, the haploid phase is passed on by the fungus. It is macrocyclic, macrocyclic because it is a long, cy long cycle rust. It forms five different spores and hence no, it is known as polymorphic. Polymorphic means it produces a number of spores. So these spores, they follow one another in a definite sequence within a lifespan of one year. So coming to the vegetative structure, the mycelium is well developed and consists of septate and intercellular hyphae. So the mycelium spreads intercellularly to produce small round or branched hostoria into the host cells. There is a single central pore in each septum for the protoplasmic connection from one cell to another. The hyphae do not ramify, ramify means it do not spread throughout the interior of the host but they are restricted to isolated patches on the organ on which it is attacked. It produces two types of mycelia, one is monokaryotic type of mycelium which occurs in the primary host that is the wheat and the dikaryotic type is found in the alternate host namely the barberry plant. The life cycle of Paxenia graminis is divided into five different stages based on the nature of spores. They are the uridineal stage, telial stage, both these stages they are seen on the wheat plant. The third one is the basidial stage. The basidial stage is seen on the uh, either on the soil or on the harvested straw. Pycneal stage and the ECL stage they are seen on the barberry plant. So coming to the uridineal stage, this is also known as the rust stage, rust stage characterized by the presence of spores known as uridospores. So these spores are seen in a prominent organized granular reddish brown spots 
which appear on the culms, leaf sheets and also on the leaves. It represents the first sign of the disease. So these lesions are oblong and they merge into one another. Each sorus is called as uridosorus or uridinium that consists of orange red uridospores. So they develop from a mass of dicaryotic hyphae which collect below the epidermis of the host tissue. So you can see in this diagram, so from the base of the uridosorus, you can see the sun certain specialized hyphae. These are the specialized hyphae which are called as the sporophores which are called as the sporophores arises which bears this uridospores. Uridospores they are intermixed with the sterile hyphae namely the paraphysis. So you can see the single uridospore here. Each uridospore is binucleate broadly ovoid with a thick wall consisting of two layers. The outer layer is called as the exosporium and the inner layer is called as the endosporium. The exosporium is brownish in color and it is covered with short spines. Short spines, well endosporium is thin and colorless. So the rusty red color of the uridosori, it gives a characteristic name, rust to the fungus and the disease is called as the rust disease. At maturity, they are freely exposed due to the rupturing of the epidermis. So you can see the diagram here and the first one is the first diagram that is A. It is a section through the uridosorus on the wheat stem showing the uridospores. You can see the emerging the uridospores coming out in mass and here and there you can see the paraphysis intermingled and this is a sting a single this is a single uh, uridospore which is provided with two wall layers and it has got a stalk and on germination it produces a germ tube. So the uridospores they are easily get detached and disseminated by wind currents. They are carried to the other wheat plants where they germinate to produce a new crop of uridospores. See what happens is this uridospores on germination it puts out a slender tube like structure which is called as the germ tube. So this germ tube when it falls on the wheat plant it produces a vesicle like structure which is called as the appressorium. So appressorium it produces a number of branched mycelia. This mycelia penetrates into the host plant through the stomata. So when it enters through the stomata here it produces the substomatal vesicle. Substomatal vesicle in turn produces the secondary hyphae which ramifies I mean which spreads throughout the host tissue. So this is how the tilutospore germinates on the sorry this is how the uridospore germinates on the wheat plant. The next stage is the tilito stage or the telial stage. So after the host plant matures the same mycelia the same mycelia which gave rise to uridospores now it starts giving rise to another kind of spores called the tilitospores. The first tilitospores are generally developed in a mixed sorus containing both urido as well as tilito but later on later on if the sorus contains only the tilitospores. So these telia the, these telia it forms an elongated dark brown to black lesions on the stems and leaves of the host plant hence the common name black stem rust of wheat. So the tilitospores they are stalked dark brown to black in color thick walled and two celled each cell containing a pair of nuclei. When they are young each cell has two nuclei and maturity they fuse resulting in a single diploid nucleus in each cell. Tilitospores they are not capable of immediate germination until the next spring. These are the final spores and the rust is most harmful and it is destructive at this stage. As they fall on the soil they undergo a long resting period and exposed to the freezing temperature of the winter before they can germinate. So you can see the a section through tilito sorus on wheat stem showing the tilitospores in various stages of development in the you can also see a single tilitospore which is 
bicelled and binucleate and in the third diagram you can see the germinating tilotospore and this is the section of the leaf showing the tilotosaurus as well as the tilotospores so to summarize Paxinia graminus is a macrocyclic heterocious fungus that causes wheat stem rust disease. The repeating stage in this fungus occurs on the wheat and allows the disease to persist in the wheat. It is characterized by the presence of iridinia which are brick red elongated blister like pistules that are easily shaken off. These pistules rupture the epi epidermis giving a ragged appearance. Towards the end of the growing season the black tilotospores are produced hence the stem rust is also known as the black rust so in this we have studied only the two stages of paxenia one is the uridial stage characterized by the formation of uridospores these are also called as repeating spores as they reinfect the same wheat plant and thus it spreads the whole crop of wheat and the second stage is the uridial, sorry, telial stage, which is characterized by the formation of tilotospores. It is dark brown to black in color and it causes damage to the wheat plant. So, in the next video, we shall study the other three stages of this paxenia. Thank you.